So here we are, everybody, fourth chapter in our four-part series on the four keys to practice success or business success. It really doesn't matter what business you're in. In this case, we're talking physical therapy, occupational speech therapy. That is what I know. That is what I've been doing for 30 plus years. Actually, yeah, just over 30 years. It's crazy. It's been since 1992, right? So, hey, what I want to share with you today in this fourth part of this series is systems of operation. Here at Meg Academy, we know that when we first start talking to somebody about how to improve their practice and live the life they envision for themselves, how to reach their ideal scene, what they want to know is what to do. Like, what do I do? How do I do this? What's the doing this on that? What's the mechanism you use or strategy you use or uh, application or tool? They just can't wait to get into the doing this. And I will always cool their jets and say, look, if you don't fix your environment and you don't have something that people can come in and be proud of, or you're not in the right part of town, or you don't have everything set up to attract patients into your practice, number one, you haven't identified the five division structure where you can actually know who to measure and what you're measuring, what the metrics are, which measure groups and organizational performance, what the statistics are, which measure individual performances, and hold an accountability by hiring the best and the brightest staff members. Every single time you have a turnover in your clinic of a clinician, you are losing about $23,000 on average with every single therapist turnover you have. We've got to avoid those. We've got to keep our good staff. We have to retain them. And if anything, we want to have two or three folders deep on new applicants coming in. And I've got a lot of secrets for success in terms of recruiting. A lot of people are looking for therapists. It's not that hard if you know where to look and who to talk to and how to do it in terms of the ads, in terms of the... Um, rollout, onboarding process, and of course, the professional enhancement, personal enhancement. But today we're talking systems. So here's some systems of operation that I think you absolutely have to have under your belt if you're going to be that practice where people are so attracted to want to work for you and they think that you have it going on leaps and bounds ahead of your competitors. First system is your recruitment system. You're hiring and recruiting and onboarding. Hiring, recruiting, and onboarding totally different things. Recruiting is throwing the ads out there, doing the phone screens, getting them interested to come in and meet with you, how to run the actual interview day. That is recruiting. Hiring is the interview, the close, and their first 90 days. That is all of what hiring is all about because Statistics have shown that employees are most apt to leave their employment in the first 90 days. So just because you hired someone and they showed up day one, week one, month one, do not think you're out of the woods and you're like, done, check, not true. They are not invested enough and because they're not invested enough, not enough time, energy, and effort has gone into your practice at this point. Walking away is an easy thing to do. People leave at the drop of a hat. The minute they sense chaos, the minute they smell something's different from what was presented, or I had the wrong idea, and now this is not what I thought, the reality has shifted. They're out. They're out. They're not going to hang around and give you the benefit of the doubt. Most likely in the first 90 days, not so much. So... We have to have certain systems that are directed towards staff retention. So let me pull out the system for that. 10 minute meeting, 10 minute meeting. Have 10 minute meetings once a week with every new hire for the first 90 days, minimum. I don't care if they come in and talk about their labradoodles all day, or they come in and they talk about their spouse or their boyfriend or girlfriend or the last vacation they took or what their favorite hobby is. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're the person of power sitting, even Steven, peer to peer, having a 10 minute discussion with them about how things are going and how they feel. You're not coaching them. You're not training them. You're not giving them things to do. You're just conversing with them. Just be there. Just be directed in terms of um, your energies and efforts and your intention at just building more rapport and establishing a more common reality with this person. Let it start social and just kind of try to like put in points of agreement because the person's going to absolutely love you and they're going to love talking to you and they're going to love having your ear. You never know. They may give you good tips and good suggestions on how you can improve things here at the practice because they're coming in from an outside look. Very valuable both directions. Number two, system of operation. Once we have that person in, we're doing our 10 minute meetings, please make sure as part of the onboarding process, you have the system of using an onboarding checklist and you deliver a two-way street lecture. The two-way street lecture says, hey, 
I hired you and I'm gonna exchange with you on this compensation package and I'm gonna exchange with you on this salary package and this uh, time off and you know flexibility and flex schedule and bonus system that you put in, whatever it may be, or pay for performance, which you should be hiring all therapists based on pay for performance right now. If you're using that system, then by all means, you have to share with them and, and coach them in the two-way street to say, well, so what are we expecting in return? What is it that we're expecting to come into the practice in exchange for what we're giving you, right? Make sure that they understand that their whole package may be a 75,000 a year salary, but with benefits, it's definitely 82. It's oh, not that, probably more like 87, maybe like $87,000 package. Let them know that they actually were hired at an $87,000 package. And in exchange for that, you're expecting 85% efficiency, 3.75, units of care being delivered and high quality and you must have at least four markers that measure high quality care so that's what we coach in that system of staff retention because they're going to feel much better about staying with you long term if they clearly know hey man this is a two-way street i'm getting the goods in this direction and i'm giving the goods in that direction patients are doing well practice is doing well my owner really loves having me here i love being a part of being here Next system of operation that I would definitely put out there for every single person you brought in, yeah, moving forward in 2022 for sure, pay for performance model. Pay for performance model. You cannot afford to continue doing salary and benefits as all, I just gave you that example because I know so many of you are still doing that, but moving forward, start flipping people to pay for performance. Now, if you're worried about that, like, oh, what, they're gonna have to work a lot harder to make the same amount of money or more. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. Or, oh, I'm gonna have a walkout. They're gonna get upset. I'm, I'm changing how they're getting compensated. Not true. Absolutely not true. What will happen is the people who are highly motivated and the people who are highly or oh, have great pride in what they do, on average, they're going to make somewhere between five to eight thousand dollars more per year for doing very little more in terms of volume, but doing much more in terms of efficiency and quality. So if you have the right pay for performance model, that is going to be the experience you're going to have. And that is what we built. It took us months to put this together because we saw the other ones out there and we were like, like this, like this, hate that, like this, hate that, don't like that. Nobody wants to share the risk. Why are you selling a shared risk model? Now they people change the name, but it's kind of a joke, right? Nobody who wants to work for somebody wants to share the risk. If they want to do that, they open their own clinic. So that brings me to another system that you should actually consider, you know, in my opinion, and putting into your practice. Management style. There's two ways you can manage your staff. You can manage by personality. Oh, I like her. Oh, I like him. He works hard. She works hard. They work through lunch, this, that, but that's only going to get you so far because people are going to think you're playing favorites. Managing by personality is never going to be the answer in the long run. Management by statistics. Define for each person what their doing this is, that's their hat, what the products are that have to roll off and be produced because of their doing this because they figured out how to do it really well. Know and let them know how they're going to be measured on that and they're going to submit their statistics on a weekly basis and then they're going to be highly exchanged with based on the results of their efforts, not because they bought Krispy Kremes and they bought me a Starbucks gift card or they laugh at my jokes but because they're a high performer. And now they get to go home saying, you know what, I'm top dog in my clinic. I'm doing a really good job. I really like the people I work with. I'm really being rewarded and acknowledged for what I'm doing and I'm being compensated as such. So definitely, definitely get into that. That system is gonna help you tremendously. And then the last system, and there's so many, I mean, I could literally go on and on for days on this, but one of the last systems I wanna share with you that's a real big winner, really works over, works over our practice owners when they first come in, is the front desk management system. You should understand, in my opinion, I think you should learn a front desk management system. The front desk management system is gonna reduce your cancellations and no-shows so that you're gonna have above 92% kept appointments. 92% of kept appointments will be the result of a good, solid, well thought out, well operated, and well complied with front desk management system. The front desk management system is going to address, or wrong word, is going to include your clinicians, your tech, if you have a tech, your patient care rep, if you have a patient care rep, your obviously front desk and office manager, and your billing team, whether it's outsourced or inside. All of these people have some fractional participation in ensuring that your patients 
would never want to go anywhere else because they just take great pride in how they're being treated as a person. They feel really good about the therapist that's treating them and how and why and the results they're getting. And they feel really good about being a part of your community because of how they're being interacted with, both from the administrative staff remotely, whether that be billers or whatnot, and face-to-face, -face, whether that be front desk coordinators, office managers. Honestly, if people come to your practice and they feel like this is a very special place, this is not an experience I've had somewhere else, why go anywhere else? If you're not having gamification, if you're not participating in gamification, and if you don't know that word, look that up, and you're not rolling out monthly games and monthly participations and high levels of engagements with your patients, you're not building that community. Because if you are, here's the result I would expect to see. Over 65%. Okay, write that down, jot that down. Over 65% of all your monthly evals must be return business. Patients who've been here before, friends, family members, coworkers, peers of a patient who's been here before. Because that patient's experience was so overwhelmingly positive, they're telling everybody and they're marketing for you. And you're gonna know this because you have another system of operation, which is the marketing tracking sheet at your front desk. And you're gonna be tallying that up and statistically graphing that on a monthly basis. So there's just some things off the top of my head that I think are gonna be very workable solutions. You can plug and play them tomorrow. They are gonna change your life in running your practice because what's the idea here? The idea is to have freedom. The idea of running a successful PT clinic is to have financial stability with time flexibility that equals freedom. That is the only reason why we should get up and go to work each and every day is to strive in that direction. And you should be helping to participate in achieving that for all the people that work for you and work with you and side by side enhance their lives, they will enhance your life. That's it. I hope you really enjoy this series. I love the four keys to business success. It is my book. It will be coming out. You will get in much greater detail within the book. And of course, if you join Mega Academy, you will get live in-person coaching. You'll get 24-7 coaching through our Slack channels. You'll get all of our web-based training as well as all of our handouts and materials. Pirate everything. It's all yours. I share everything with you once you become one of our Meg Academy members. And if you do, honestly, you will never regret the idea that you now are no longer trying to figure things out alone. You're going to have this whole new like vital revitalization because you're part of a community. You're part of a network of literally hundreds, if not thousands of owners that are sharing thoughts and ideas every single day on our platform. So that's it. Check out our website, www.megbusiness.com. Sign up for a practice assessment call with me. I will talk to you about your practice and we will decide what is the best avenue for you to take because I just want to help you live the life you've always envisioned for yourself. Reach your ideal scene by investing time and energy and effort and some resources into yourself because growing your abilities will grow those around you. That's it. I enjoy doing these videos. Please give me a thumbs up. I really would appreciate that. Subscribe so you don't miss another video coming at you. And that's it. Sorry this one was a little bit longer, but I had a lot to say. Take care, everybody.